Hi everybody, Ben here from Atlas Ordinary. So I've got some more paints delivered. So I am going to try them out. And my, I always like to try things out in a pour that I actually feel I'm good at. So I've got more treasure gold paints from Folk Art. So the colors I got is just plain gold. It has dulled a little bit when I add the, added the flow troll, so I'm hoping it shines back up again once it dries. I got green gold. I think that's what it's called. Yep, green gold. And these colours are beautiful. And this one, which I'm actually a little bit surprised about the colour. So this one here is antique copper. It's come out, well now that I've mixed it with the flow troll, it's actually come out very purple. Um, it's got gold in it, but it's actually got a very purple tone to it. So I'm going to be quite surprised at how this one actually looks on the canvas. So, especially with the swipe, because um, it will probably be more gold when it's thick, and, or more copper when it's thick, and then go more purple as I go swipe it. Then I have my normal... Um, black, which is carbon black from Holcroft. I always find having a neutral paint in with the metallics gives more cells um, or lacing. If I just had these, I don't always get a lot of lacing. And the background colour this time, I've decided to go a, a light grey. So, I hope you guys can see this colour well. You'll see it once I start pouring anyway. So this was 35 grams white and 2 grams black um, from Montmartre. It's actually greyer than I thought for having 35 grams white and 2 grams black, but I actually think it will complement these colours quite well. So I've kept it. I did make one up at first which had 4 grams black, but it was too dark, so I changed it to this one. So that is it, but... I am loving these new paints. So, um, I tried it with the the blue quartz and the light amethyst, and it was beautiful. So I decided to get a couple more colours. Not the easiest to get, I will tell you that. Um, they were a challenge to find, and I still didn't get all the colours I actually initially um, set out to buy. But that's the way that it goes. I am going to move these out of the way while I do the base coat. So over here they go. And all as I do with the base coat is I pour it on. I spread it around with my palette knife until I've got all the sides covered and all the surface covered and then I tilt it to make it even so you want it nice and smoothly even not um, lumpy or um, heavy on one end and light at the other end so that's it so I'm going to pause it while I do the base coat because we don't really need to see that and um, I'll be back soon all right I'm back so oh, that was a little bit of an omission so what I also did forget to tell you was the ratios. So the, the base was 35 grams white, two grams black, and about 145 grams flow troll. So it was four to one. Then the Holcroft black is four grams paint and 12 grams flow troll, which makes it three to one. These here, because the colour went a little bit dull, I didn't want to reduce it too much with the flow troll. And they are a little bit more um, more fluid than the, the Holcroft. So these are two to one. So these are four grams paint and eight grams flow troll. So really I've only used up four grams paint to make up each one of these little colours. I am going to give them a stir. You want the pigments to all be nice and even when you start pouring. And the hardest part is going to be which order do I put these colours. So, because I kind of want them all to be highlighted. 
so it's hard to pick which one. I may go the green first. Yeah, let's go the green first. And I'm going to do my normal squiggle. Start off the canvas. And go all the way to your off the canvas. I like doing that kind of pattern. I find it gives me good um, effects. Then I'm going to go purple. And same, start off the canvas and go on. And I've only, I haven't used all of that paint that's in these containers either. I've probably used about half to two thirds. Now the gold, I'm going to do a slightly different squiggle with this one. Just so it mixes up with it. And now the black. I like to put the black on top because I find that will give me the better lacing. If I put it at the bottom, I don't get as good a lacing. And as you can see, I haven't been overly heavy with any of them. I've just done a squiggly line from start to finish. I'm going to put these paints just to the side for now. Now, my swipe cards are... Oh, did I cut these the right size? Maybe not. Um, do I want them that wider or do I want them wider? I might want them actually wider. So, what I have is just plain paint cards. And try to keep them with something heavy on them so they stay flat and don't curl a little bit. And you can do your swipes whatever size you want. Yep, I'm going to go cut in half. I'm just going to cut three cards up because I don't think I'm going to use more than that. So, there's my cards done. The thickness you do your cards will change the outcome of your artwork. So keep that in mind. And my black is sinking, not into the um, into the background colour, but it is into the metallic. As you can see, it's still quite heavy when it's on the background colour, but when it hits the metallic, it's sinking a little bit. May give me slightly different results to what I was thinking. And can you see how the copper actually looks quite purple? Um... You can see that in the jar too, in the bottle. So I knew it was going to turn out that way. And I think this will look good with this black, back, I mean the grey background. I'm not going to, uh, do I just add another little squiggle of black just because it sank a bit? I think I will. Just a little bit. Oh, you naughty paint. <laughs> see how it skipped in that one spot? So I'm just going to put a dot here and there. There's a dot. And there's a dot. That'll do. That'll just add a little bit of colour to it. You have to do it now before you start. I find once you do it later, it's better to do it now before you do any swiping. Okay, get your paint card. Do slightly over the edge and try and grab half of that paint from the middle. Swipe to you and you can lift at any point that you like, either straight up to the left, to the right to give you different peaks. Um, or you can just go all the way to the edge. But I like to get, do the ghost swipe where I get the peaks. So place it there. Drag it. So see how the black gave me the lacing and the other colour didn't? That's why I try and add a plain colour. You can use other colours, but black seems to be quite cool. So again, swipe and lift. I try to do it a little bit at a decent pace and not try to rush doing it. Um, for me, doing it 
at a steady pace works better than trying to rush it. Grab half the paint, swipe and lift. Half the paint, swipe and lift. And try to keep that line level. I'd actually have to say the purple seems to be coming out. I mean, the copper seems to be coming out kind of color shifty with the way that sometimes you see the purple and sometimes you see the copper. And it's just a matter of swiping, lifting it up. I like, I like to lift it. You can hit the edge in a few spots. I try to do different peaks where I've got shorter ones and longer ones. That card is curling, so I'm turning it around and I'm going to use the other side. If this side's too soggy, um, get a new card because when you try to drag it, it's got a little bit too much flex in it. So I try to turn my card around before it gets too soggy. Drag and lift. Grab, drag and lift. Oh, these are going to be so awesome when they're dry because I can see the colour. When you wipe it on your paper towel, you get a half dried look. And you can see how colourful they are. So swipe, drag and lift. Swipe. Whoa. So I'm happy I added that second lot of black because there's not a lot of black in it. And I think it needed it because a lot of it was sinking. Grab, swipe and lift. I'm going to fold this over. So I'll just show you if you can see that paper towel shine. It's beautiful. Always gives you a good indication of what it's going to look like when it's dry. Grab, swipe and lift. Now the edges are your hard part. Don't push down too hard or you'll hit the wood. There, just a little bit of a swipe just to so it wasn't unbalanced. I often do this as well. I just get my swipe card and I just swipe the edge. Just so you don't get four runs of the paint just dripping down the edges, which you get. It just means if you see it from the side, you kind of see a similar pattern to the top. Now that paper towel's finished and that swipe card I'm not going to use and I'm going to get a new one. Now I have to turn this around, so I've got to try to keep it in the same spot. But look at all these cells appearing. Beautiful gold and purple. So I'm going to call it purple, even though it's called copper. Um, it looks purple to me. Um, it has a, a copper tone to it, but it looks more purple. I will wait and see what it looks like precisely once it's dried. Um, so it's antique. Oh, was it antique copper? Um, yeah, antique copper. It definitely looks purple on the artwork. But it looks great with that green gold and the normal gold. I'm pretty happy with this so far. Now... Now I'm just turning it around, putting it down where I think is the same position it was before. Don't move your hands over the top of the canvas, you will drip a bit of paint. That's from experience. <laughs> Alright, let me check the camera to make sure it's still pretty even for you guys. Yeah, I think that is. My colouring's still not the best. I'll keep going and buy another light and they just don't have any in stock. So I've had to just put up with the, the ring light that I've got. 
I love the ring light, but I just want one on either. If I have it too close, it creates a lot of reflection. So I've had to move it a, um, probably 75 centimeters away or a bit over two foot, two and a half feet. But I want one on this side so I get more of an even lighting because I find it's brighter here and duller over here. I just have to wait. Okay, now we try and grab from the same center part that we grabbed the paint from before and we just swipe this way. So grab, swipe, lift. And wipe your towel. Grab, swipe, lift. And it is just a matter of continuing the same thing all the way along. Getting a little bit more black, but I think the colors are actually pushing their way through the black now. The most important thing I find with this is try and grab that same line. Um, just because sometimes I have gone a little bit wonky and yet you can tell a little bit. Oh, look at all these cells. I'm going to turn my card around now because it's at the point where I can feel it's a little bit soggy, but not too soggy that I can still use the other side. Sometimes I go a little bit quiet when I'm concentrating. Okay, one last swipe and we're done. Fantastic. So, I'm nearly doing a happy dance, so I am thrilled. I love these colours. I like this paint. Um, I was quite happy with how the paint was last time I used it, but I think it's actually turned out a little bit better again. Um, on a black background, I don't think I used... Uh, so this time I used the, the black as a plain paint. I don't think I used the plain paint last time. By not using a plain paint, I don't get these cells and these effects as much as if I was to do just with the metallics. So keep that in mind. Adding one plain opaque paint seems to give you the extra cell action, which is good because it adds more interest to it. And it kind of just livens it up. It gives you the cells and just adds a little bit more different interest into the artwork. So these cells will continue to change a little bit. Um, they don't look like they're gonna overswell like Extreme Sheen does. They've swelled up to uh, probably a good degree without being um, over the top, really. Only section I probably would have liked, a tiny bit more cell would have been here. Um, I could attempt to get some but I don't want to I find if I sometimes try and add or do something to an artwork I tend to make a mistake and then I regret that what I've done and then I feel like I've ruined the whole thing when just leave it it's it's art it I'm not trying to paint a portrait of anyone so it doesn't have to be identical to what I see this is kind of just what I want 
And I think it, these are still changing and there is a few cells in there. Um, but I'm loving this so much. So this is virtually just Folkart. Folkart treasured gold paints. So we have antique copper, we have green gold and we have plain gold. I do think that they will get brighter as they dry because the float troll will probably, um, well, the float troll will dry clear, which will show them a bit more. When it's wet, the float troll's um, a, a white color and changes the color of the paint a little bit while it's wet, but usually does dry, dry well. And then it's just the plain black paint. I use Holcroft um, Professional. You can use Liquitex Basics, you can use Amsterdam, you can use most of the paints, as long as it's one of the nice deep black um, opaques. I have done it with other colors and it does work as long as they're an opaque. Um, when you use transparent, you don't seem to get the cells or the lacing the same. I think that's about as much information as I can give you. So treasured gold paints mixed two to one, Holcroft paint mixed three to one, background paint mixed four to one, and Australian flow troll has been used. Um, you can use whatever swipe tool you like, or you can do whatever you like. I just wanted to show you how these work, and um, now I just need to find the other colors that I really wanted, but um, yeah, the store where I brought them from had virtually sold out, and um, I don't know if they normally stock them or whether it was a special thing that they got in. I'm loving this and I will show you a dry, I'll show you the dry artwork probably in a couple of videos in the future. Um, I won't be able to show you it for a few days. It's cooling down here and the nights are getting quite cold, probably six degrees Celsius. And the artworks are just taking so much longer to dry. But that's the fun of it. You just have to go with how it is. So. Thank you so much, everyone. I'm going to bring you down for a close-up. Okay, so this is what I see from my side, and it is a little bit lighter in real life. Um, the lighting's making it a little bit dull. Let me see if I can... How's that? That's, that's probably closer to it. But look at all that lacing, and look at those colours. So you, I hope you guys can tell that looks like purple to me and not copper. But you come on a metallic angle... Ooh. And it has a, a copper tone to it. Um, it's really cool. I love this green gold and the plain gold. The plain gold has probably gone the dullest with the flow troll, but I think that will actually become one of the brightest. And let's have a look at some of this awesome cells and lacing. Look how cool that is. And that's just plain. That's not even in the metallic side. Can you see metallic in there? Oh, a little bit. Not a lot. But this is what adding the black does. It does give you this lacing um, and cells. So it's worth always adding an opaque colour to it. Oh, I love these. Oh, look at this one. Half gold, half. I'm just still going to say purple, even though it's copper. Alrighty. Well, I hope you guys like this. I um, hope you had fun watching and I will try and do different experiments with these paints um, and see whether they give different reactions in different ways. But um, let me know what you think. So comment, like, share the video. Um, that really helps me out. It that gets more people to see my video and help support me and subscribe if you have not already when you subscribe hit the bell and click all and it will let you know when new videos come up whether you watch the new videos or not at least if you got the notification you can look at the thumbnail and decide um, what you think from there but all right have a great day everyone and i'll see you soon for another pour okay bye